My name is John Smolin. I'm a professor in the Department of Biology at Queen's University, where I also hold the Canada Research Chair in Environmental Change. Well, I study environmental change, but I study environmental change on long time frames. Uh, one of the biggest challenges we have in ecological and environmental research is the lack of long-term data. So what I do is I try and extend the data set back in time where most of the answers are. For example, with acid rain, it was important to know what was the acidity before acid rain. So how would you know that without having long-term data? Well, no one was measuring pH in the 1800s, so you have to use different methods. The methods we use is we primarily work on lakes, and lakes are wonderful. They slowly fill with mud 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year. And in that mud at the bottom is slowly a history book accumulating of what happened in the lake and outside the lake. We look at the, it's like uh, going back in time. The deeper you go, the older it is. We have methods of getting that sediment and knowing how old it is. We can say that's 1920s, 1850s, 2000 years ago. And we can look at fossils and other indicators in the mud and we can reconstruct what the environment was like. So our lab looks at all sorts of things, acid rain, climate change is a very big question. Uh, People say, well, the climate's getting warmer, but how do we know it's not part of natural variability? Well, we can show that by going back in time. Uh, and we just had a paper out on the oil sands. There's been big controversy as to is the pollution, how much of the pollution is natural? The bitumen or the oil sand material is very close to the surface. It's been a lot of controversy that, yes, the chemicals are higher in the water, but maybe it's all natural. Well, we could show that many of these contaminants have come in through the oil sands operation. We could go back and show they started increasing in the 1960s and kept on increasing lockstep, and we can sort of fingerprint it to the oil industry. So we basically reconstruct environmental histories.